So folks, right now, OMG, things are going horribly, not only for our good old pal old Donnie, but also for his chief henchman, Jim Jordan, who is absolutely crumbling right now as he is failing in his speaker vote. Because while, yes, we know that he technically won the GOP nomination for speaker, he's like 70 votes short of actually getting it done. And he is crumbling. The media is tearing him down. And it culminates, guys, in him getting booted and cut off a CNN interview as he's screaming about everything, including the investigation into Trump because mark my words all of this is because of his MAGA cronery the reason he is where he is is because of Donald Trump but the reason he'll never become speaker is because he's too close to that evil SOB so hit the like and subscribe button it really helps me out and here's a supercut of people ripping in the Jordan and then him flipping out and storming out like never before Tara, you actually predicted on the show months ago a situation with Jim Jordan ending up as House Speaker. Do you think that he'll eventually get to that 217 number, that magic number that he needs to get the gavel in the end? Uh, good morning, Katie. Listen, when I was predicting that, it was a worst case scenario. It was, it, you know, I didn't want to be right about this because that would mean that the House GOP has turned into complete chaos, which, well, unfortunately, it has devolved into that. Um, this is just an example of the absolute desperation of the Republican caucus that Jim Jordan has been nominated for speaker. It tells you everything you need to know about the degeneration of the House GOP and the, the party as a whole. Do I think he has a chance of, of winning over the entire conference? Um, unlikely. I think it's unlikely given Jim Jordan's history. Um, the Republicans have now nominated a, quote, legislative terrorist, according to former Speaker John Boehner. OK, this guy's reputation in Congress is awful. His hometown paper, the Cleveland Plain Dealer, called him the second most contemptible human in government in 2019. Jim Jordan has been a bomb thrower and uh, for years, that's his entire brand. He does nothing but stir the pot. He goes after conspiracy theories. And oh, by the way, he was also heavily involved in the attempt to overturn our government in a violent coup plot alongside Trump and the rest of the, his lackeys. He also defied a congressional subpoena. So this guy is supposed to be the one that's now going to bring the House of Representatives together and hold the speaker's gavel. You don't negotiate with terrorists. If he has a reputation of being a legislative terrorist, what makes anyone think he's all of a sudden had a born again experience and is going to become a decent human being and an adult legislator that's going to run the House of Representatives that requires playing ball with both sides? You have to be able to work with Democrats. And you think that's Jim Jordan? I don't think so. Summer Lee is a Democrat of Pennsylvania. Uh, and she joins me now. Um, Congresswoman, I, I wonder how this looks from the Democratic side of the aisle. You, I mean, you guys, it's like, I remember talk, talking to friends of mine who are writers during the writer's strike, and they were like, well, I mean, you know, we can't work and kind of want to, but we're, <laughs> you guys are on like on a weird enforced yeah. uh, no work period until they figure this out, I guess. Yeah, it's like pure chaos. And it, honestly, it, it's, it's shameful and it's ridiculous at this point. We come back in the midst of all that we have happening and we're sitting here since Tuesday night. We've not seen the House floor. We've not seen a committee room. We've not passed a bill. We're 35 days from another budget crisis and we are doing this every day, day in and day out. So I think it reflects incredibly poorly on the Republican conference, on their leadership ability. And honestly, frankly, from I think our perspective, we recognize that there is no qualified candidate that they're able to produce anyways. So we sit in the wings waiting with our own caucus ready to lead and ready to go. Yeah, the, it, we, just the math here, saw how Kapoor laid this out earlier. They, they threw McCarthy overboard. He had 210 votes in the House majority to be Speaker. Then they picked Scalise, who had 113. Again, internally, he withdrew. Now they not nominated Jordan, who on the second go, vote got 124. The number to win is 217. Like, they're still pretty far. Um, I guess uh, my, my question to you is, there is talk about, there has been the case in some state houses. Similar dysfunction in which Democrats have actually cut a deal 
with some faction of a Republican majority to elect a speaker. Is that a discussion Democrats are having? Can you imagine a world in which that did happen? You know, I can say that I've not been and, and no one who's who I've uh, served in, in, in caucus with have, have, are a part of those type of discussions. I would be really surprised if the Republicans would humble themselves in any way to accept a deal from the from the Democrats. Right. We're a caucus right. of calm. We're the caucus that would prove to you know this was their moment. They regained the majority. They were supposed to sail in, cruise in, and do everything that they wanted to do. And it has been a, it has been an utter disaster from day one. So it would take a level of self-awareness uh, close to Scalise stepping down, but uh, a little bit even more than that for them to accept, you know, Hawking Jeffries as as a co-leader or anything close to that. Sheer power is is still within the realm. That's what we're pushing. Uh, that's what I know progressives are are, are are making sure that we want them to recognize that we can have sheer power power agreements so that we can unstall the government. That's what we want. We just want the government to work again and we want to be able to get a budget done. Yeah, the shared power agreement. I mean, I saw people floating various, you know, things. I mean, the, the, the thing to remember here is the caucus math is from the House math. It's 217. That's a vote in the House. That's a constitutional office. It's not a party vote. It's a vote in the House. You need 217. I want to just play. Former Congressman from Florida and MSNBC political analyst David Jolly. Ali, they're getting weird, right? Nancy Mace was wearing uh, fabric <laughs> sew on letter. Jim Jordan. I mean, they, they smeared. I, I saw Congressman Jamie Raskin had an interesting tweet today. He said, when I was diagnosed with cancer, my colleagues rallied around me. They used it as a smear against Steve Scalise. As awful as they are for and to American democracy, they're just as horrible to each other. Yeah, clearly there's no love lost if they're calling themselves a family here. I think this is one of my favorite features is we added this little tracker to our live blog that they've been 10 days and 59 minutes and 12 seconds without a House speaker. That is stunning. We thought that yeah. the most crazy and historic thing that we had seen was Kevin McCarthy getting ousted. But this, I think, may take the cake because at every turn, it seems like they run into a brick wall. We are now at the second person that they've nominated in basically three days to be the speaker designee. Jordan didn't earn that many more votes this time as he did 48 hours ago. I got to tell you, in my conversations with my Republican sources, there is a lot of disappointment and a lot of frustration because they thought that Jordan would get at least 150 votes coming out of this closed door conference. Maybe that would be enough for him to ride some momentum to an immediate House floor vote. But quite frankly, as soon as he came out with 124 votes from behind closed doors, there was just a, a screeching halt to any idea that they might be voting. Now, other people are saying that it's because there's attendance issues and certainly we're playing a numbers game here. But one person texted me just in the last few minutes saying we just need to elect a speaker. And it sounds like it should be so simple, but it is so difficult when you have every single member of this conference being able to pull in whatever direction they want and they can't even be lobbied block by block. It's not like the speaker designee is going to five members and assuaging their concerns or another 15 members and he can get them on board. That's not how this is working. This is individual by individual, exactly the chaos that we saw in January, setting the tone for what we're seeing right now. So, Ali, we put up your little clock. I love it so much. We also had a Manu <laughs> sighting, which I also love so much. Tell him I said hi. <laughs> um, let, let me ask you what, what, what they're fighting about. I mean, because to, to me, from where I sit, they're all election. I mean, they're so extreme as it is that the idea that there are divisions among the extremists is odd to me. There are divisions, though. I mean, when you look at the fact that Austin Scott from Georgia, who I got so many text messages from Democrats today being like, I'm Googling this guy in real time. He was not someone who had a whip operation, which he reminded me as he was leaving the room just in the last hour. And he still managed to garner over 80 votes behind closed doors just as someone who could be a stand in as, hey, I'm not Jim Jordan. Here's your other option. He is a different kind of Republican in that he is not someone like Jim Jordan who carries the baggage in the same way of January 6th. Jim Jordan, who not only is a close ally of the former president, but defied a subpoena from the January 6th committee amid other things. I remember following him during that stonewalling and asking him how it would manifest when he became a, a chairman who could issue his own subpoenas and would expect them to be respected. Clearly, there's no irony left in this building because we've almost <laughs> lost that plot line. But that's something that's real about Jim Jordan. Political, this whole thing is Jack Smith 
I mean, you know how political it is when they selected Jack Smith as a special counsel. I actually said in a deposition with Jack Smith, we deposed him on May 29, 2014, because he was looking to prosecute people who were targeted by Obama's IRS. People Lois Lerner was going after. Sir, we actually, we actually had you to can depose keep talking Smith, about this. That's I want to talk Garland about the picks. substance of this indictment. I want to talk about the alleged time obstruction and time again in what the, the indictment. Standard is. I want to talk about the alleged obstruction in this indictment. Here is you what you can't obstruct here, when there was not an Here is what crime. the indictment said. The indictment said Trump directed Nada, who's his personal aide, to move boxes before Trump attorney won June 2nd review so that many boxes were not searched and many documents responsive to the May 11th subpoena could not be found and were in fact not found by Trump attorney one. In plain English, this alleges that Trump instructed his aide to help him remove sensitive documents in defiance of a federal subpoena. A, does that trouble you? And B, if he thought that he had the right to have these documents, why was he trying so hard to hide them? No, it, it doesn't bother me because, again, you can't have obstruction of, a, of, of something when there was no underlying crime. The standard is set. The standard is the standard is what the Constitution says. And the commander in chief, the president of the United States, has the ability to classify and control access to information. That's what the Constitution the and the States court have anymore. said. So you can't obstruct when there's 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 well, you can't obstruct. He when is there's not no underlying the president crime. of the United that States. That is the fundamental flaw. If you and you're just taking and when he him was at president, his word. He declassified the material. He's but been, he says point he's blank. Been very clear he about says that. point blank on tape as president. I could have declassified it. Now I can't. He says in his own words, it's on tape as part of this indictment, that he did not declassify the material. Therefore, it is Dana, classified. Dana, saying he, saying he could have, saying he could have is not the same as saying he didn't. He, he said, said he, now he I can't. He has declassified this material. He said that mean, now he can't, right, because right, he's not president now, but when he was Which president, means he that did declassify. He said that. Which means Which, that what he, he was holding was classified. No, not, not, you could see. You know, people don't throw around the word like legislative terrorists. They don't they don't throw that around willy nilly. They don't. And we know John Boehner like, you know, he's been out of for a while, but you know him. He's no moderate. He's no he's no centrist. He was a very conservative man. And even he could look at somebody like Jimmy Boy over here and say that man is is corrosive to the institution. Like we're because like there's ideology in terms of like left, right. And I'm a left wing guy. And then there's also to a certain degree, like I like like how you view the institution and you treat it with reverence or do you disrespect it? And sometimes institutional traditions should be disrespected when they're bad. I think John Fetterman should be allowed to wear shorts. I don't care about a dress code. That institutionalism is stupid. But but Jim Jordan takes it to a whole nother level. And you could see how no one trusts. He's not trustworthy. People do not trust Jim Jordan. Some of the MAGAs do, of course. Some of the people like Lauren Boebert have said, well, I trust Jim Jordan. But as you can see, not a single Democrat trusts trust this SOB. And, and, and 50 some Republicans don't. Right. I mean, Kevin McCarthy admitted yesterday, I think that like when he when he went to the floor the first time, he was at like 180 something among Republicans. Now, eventually he got there, but he, he scratched and clawed from 180 to whatever. Jim Jordan's got 30 more votes to go. And that's why he's storming out. He has taken the speaker's defeat already. His votes already failed. He just doesn't know it yet.